Hello, everyone. Today, I'm going to be doing a score to review for the Mega Man Legacy Collection, Rockman 6. Pardon me if I butcher this uh, subtext title. Shijo Sada no Tadakai. Now, if I remember correctly from looking it up, it roughly translates to, I think it's the greatest of all time, or world's greatest, something along those lines. It's a reference towards the fact that this is originally based around the eight greatest robot warriors of all time, I believe is what it was short for. But, without further ado, this game, or if you, not... If you are watching this on YouTube and you are enjoying this kind of content, please be sure to leave a like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel. But back to the review. Now, this game was originally developed and published by Capcom, but this particular version, the Mega Man Legacy Collection, was developed by Digital Eclipse and published by Capcom. Now, I rate give video games and DLCs and stuff like that on five different categories. Starting with the first, the story. Now, this is Rockman 6, and like all the Rockman games, <clears throat> this is the Japanese version. It does have a story with some cutscenes, but unfortunately, if you can't read Japanese, you're not going to know what's going on. So. Outside of that, I have played the Mega Man 6 version, and the story for this is like short snippets to explain what's going on in the game. Basically, there's a big world tournament, Mr. X is hosting, and then when they all gather around, boom, magically Mr. X says, Yes, I've got the eight world's eight strongest robots, and I'm going to take over the world, and then that's where the game starts. So, the story is alright, I mean, there's not much to it, but I mean, it's an old game, they had limited development, so I mean, there really was techni a technical limit to how much story you could put in without cutting into the actual gameplay itself. Now the second category is music and sound effects. And as with all the Rockman games, this is by far, hands down, the best part of the review. If you like any of the Mega Man games, the music in this game is really well done, as with all the Rockman and Mega Man games music were. And this game still brings back the iconic sound effects like the jumping and the shooting, which has been around since like the first game. My only gripe, and I've heard multiple people say this. The, the Rock Buster originally had an explosive sound. This one gives you that really pathetic basic buster lit sound. So, <laughs> it, it's disappointing sounding. I don't know if that was an accidental put the wrong sound effect in or if they did it on purpose. I'm not 100% sure but it doesn't really affect anything to do with how the game actually plays, so it's not really a big deal. Now the graphics, as with all the 8-bit older game styles, if you like the 8-bit pixelated look, you will love these this game, because to me the Mega Man games did some of the best pixelated work back on the old 8-bit eras. But if you're not into the older retro look, you probably will look at this and be like, eh, this looks horrible, so. Y you have to take these kinds of pixel style graphics with a grain of salt. If you're not willing to try them out, you probably won't like them. So, now that I've covered music, story, and, uh, graphics. I'm going to get on to the meat of this review, which is the gameplay and mechanics. And I'm going to preface this with 
A big gripe I had with Mega Man 6 on this collection is still present in Rock Man 6, but it's not as prominent, and that is for some unknown reason. There is a high amount of times where the game just eats your jump input. I don't know why it does it, but it does it. Mega Man 6 did it too, but it did it way worse than Rock Man 6. So if you have to play either of these and you're trying for the achievement for beating this game, I highly recommend Rock Man 6. I came across far less input um, eating for the jumps. Now, Outside of that technical issue, which I think was a problem with porting it to the collection, I'm pretty sure that's what it is. This game adds a new system, which is the normal Rockman, Jet Rockman, and Power Rockman. Now, the Jet and Power are two adapters that you unlock from beating bosses, like you would the special items like... Rush Marine, Rush Jet, or Item 1, 2, and 3 in Mega Man 2. You just get them by simply beating bosses. Jet gives you a limited flight booster pack, and Power gives you the ability to move heavy square blocks about the size of the block that Power, is, power Suit is listed in, or destroying cracked walls and stuff like that. So, uh, those are two really useful abilities that you unlock in the game. And a, another thing about the mechanic is they also mechanics is that they also changed how the Mega slash Rockbuster fully charged looks again. For some reason they change it just about every game and I don't know why, but they just do. But that one's not as big of an issue. Beat makes a return. But to me, unlike Rockman 5, he's no longer near as strong, so I never used him at all through this playthrough, or through my playthrough of Mega Man 6 for that matter. Now, if I remember correctly, I think this is the... No, it's not. I was going to say it's the first Rockman game that has a weapon that's used for getting through certain areas in the game, but most of the games that had explosive weapons had that ability to, like, crash or flash bomber and stuff like that. Now, something that bugged me was this game brought the E-Tanks back, but they removed the newly incorporated M-Tank that was in 5, which I thought was kind of stupid. But, I mean, what can you do? I know it, I know it makes a return in, I think it's 7, so. But I believe in 7 they also limit your E-Tanks back down to 4 like Mega Man 2, so that's a whole other story and a whole other collection that won't be done at all during the Mega Man Legacy Collection um, review process. Now this thing at the bottom to the right of the E-Tanks, I can't select it, but that is called, I can't remember if it's called the Energy Balancer or the I can't remember what it is. I think it's the energy balancer. And that incorporates a, for the first time ever in a Mega Man game, the ability to, when you're either full on the energy of a weapon you're using, or you're using normal jet or power adapters, if you pick up a weapon energy while you're using something that's either full, or uh, doesn't con consume energy, this will automatically use the energy you pick up on the boss power or beat that has the lowest energy. So in this case, if I picked up an energy, it would replace the plant barrier. For some reason, that energy I picked up on the way down refilled the centaur flash, but yeah, it doesn't matter for the sake of this review. Now, another thing that they did in this game is I know they, in five, there was alternate ways to go through the stages but not quite as much in this one where there was like whole other paths and in order to get beat you have to clear specific bosses on specific paths in order to get the parts 
So, if you wanted to do uh, get beat, you would have to have both the adapters in order to get it, which if you watched my entire playthrough of the game, I showed a way through the boss order so that on your first playthrough you can get everything unlocked without having to go back and replay stages. But outside of that, this game did add a whole lot to it. Now, for the achievements, this, this is one of those things that's been an issue with all six games, both Mega Man and Rockman. This game, this game in particular on the collection, only deals with two achievements. There's one for beating the game, and one for beating the entire collection of the game. Now, I got the beating, or sorry, beating all six games in the collection. Now, I got the achievement for beating all six Mega Mans, but I have cleared all six Rock Mans as well. I have done playthroughs for all of them. You can see that on my YouTube channel as well. And it, it's not really that big of an issue just beating the games. So, with this game having an okay story, amazing music, great sound effects, um, the graphics, if you like the 8-bit look, are still hold up pretty well to this day. The uh, gameplay mechanics, while suffering from the A button eating, or the jump button eating issue, introduced a lot of mechanics and changes to the game, which are welcome, and it helped balance the game out overall. And then there was the achievement. All in all, I would say, um, I would rate this the same as I did Mega Man 6. Rockman 6, I'm going to give a 7 out of 10 as well. So, as I said before, please be sure to leave a like and subscribe on the channel. It really helps. 7 out of 10, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Catch you later.